is Kane, and I'm here to help you. Today we're going to show you how to make a Category 5 and Category 6 patch cable. I've found in my travels that nobody knows how to make this. Even big network administrators who, like, make more money than me, and they run my network, and they're like, Hey, I need a patch cable. Do you know how to make it? No, I don't. Here, let me get a diagram. I learned how to make this when I was 14. You should know how to make these. They're simple. They're easy. We need a Category 5E or Cat 5E patch cable. So we're going to have a length of cable that we've selected. We've got one about 10 feet right here. And we're going to need two modular plugs, RJ45. We also have our Cat 6, which we also have about 10 feet of cable here. And we have a Category 6 modular plug. Also, you're going to need an RJ45 crimping tool. These things you can pick up at your local hardware store, Home Depot, Lowe's, that kind of thing. You can find them online. They're relatively inexpensive and you can use these to make hundreds of cables. This one's 300 years old. People will always ask you what's the difference between CAD 5E and CAT 6. And first and foremost, CAT 6 is a bigger cable. It is a higher standard of cable. It is able to shoot uh, gigabit networks down with a lot less crosstalk, which is the, the noise that is made with the electricity running over the wires talking to each other. And it creates a, it slows down your network if you got too much crosstalk. So, Cat 5E will be good for gigabit. Cat 6 is just better for gigabit networks. Uh, if you find Cat 5 cable, which does not have the E, it will not work for gigabit networks at all. Just don't try it. It's not cool. You'll be like, why is my network so slow? It's because you're not using good enough cable. Also, if you're, you're doing this out of your home, Cat 6 is expensive by comparison to Cat 5E. We're talking like 30 cents a foot versus Cat 5E, which is probably like 15, 16. I haven't looked at the prices recently, but it's expensive to get the CAT6. So unless you really need the higher standard cable, get CAT5E, it'll do just fine. So we want to scar the cable sheath so we can break away the sheath and expose our conductors on the inside. So we're going to use just a very gentle, we're going to scar the cable sheath with the, ca the cable wire, or with the, the cutter there. And now, we're just going to bend the cable, and you can see the real stress here. You can bend it, bend it, and you can put some stress on it, and it'll break away. All right. Get the sheath exposed. Now, once we're here, we want to separate out our pairs, and you'll notice this little string here. This is actually for pulling back and exposing more of the cable. So you pull this back down this way, and it'll just cut the cable down. I'm not going to do it because I don't need any more than this. But you can just very carefully clip that string away. Here I've un untwisted all of our conductors into our different color codes. We've got our orange pair, our brown pair, a green pair, and the blue pair. We want them to be in this order I'm going to give you right now. It's going to be white with the orange stripe, orange. And then it's going to be white with the green stripe, solid blue, white with the blue stripe, solid green, white with the brown stripe, solid brown. The next thing we want to do is we want to cut back the conductors to the proper length so they will fit nicely with our modular plug. There's a crimp on the inside of the plug that will be pushed down when you crimp it with the crimping tool. It's a lot of crimping. You want the sheath to be extended past this little space here so it will get crimped down and it will hold your, hold your cable in place. Okay, so these conductors have to come all the way up to the end of the mod plug and we want this blue sheath to come extend past the crimping space that's right here. So we're going to measure about where we want it and we figure this length is good. And we want to cut, but we don't want to cut at an angle, we want to cut as straight across as possible. That's why we use these wire cutters. They explode everywhere. Now you can see a little bit of deviations, but it's going to be okay because it'll, it'll flush up in the end of the conductor. Next we're going to very carefully, and you want to, at this point, just double check your wires. Make sure that they're again in the correct order. That's white, orange, orange, white, green, blue, white, blue, green, white, brown, brown. And you're going to be very careful. You want to slit them inside. And I don't know if you can see it. The wires are actually being separated out inside the plug along little tracks. And they'll go all the way 
push it as far up as you can. Give it a little push. The sleeve will go up further. That's probably a good thing. You can check the end, and you'll see the copper conductors right along the end. That'll be nice and shiny. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and crimp the cable down. You want to make sure that you don't wiggle this too much once it's in place. And you're going to slot the mod plug into the RJ45 connector on the crimping tool. Again, check the other side of the cable. Make sure you see the, all the copper conductors. And I usually do this two or three times. You'll see here with this push down onto the cable. It's a nice solid connection. These wires get crimped down and they actually it pierces the sheath. This is where you can see the copper conductors are flush with the end of the connector. That's how you know you're going to have a nice good solid connection. All right, now we're going to do this with a Cat6 cable. The procedure is more or less the same. There's subtle differences. The things that make this cable better are also what make it harder to work with and easier to work with at the same time, and I'll explain it as we go along. The sheath is a little thicker because it's a bigger cable, and it's going to be easier to score and break open. So let's... Look at that. Came clean for There you go. Now, you can see this is a lot different. We still have the string for tearing back the sheath. We don't need it. Careful not to cut any of your wires. Now, Cat6 cable has got a larger conductor. This is a 22 gauge wire, where the Cat5e is a 24 gauge wire. Which means that this, for all of you Europeans, this is bigger. Just a bit, little bit, but it's bigger. This piece is just a big glop of insulation. It separates out all of the wires and runs the entire length of the cable. So each pair, as you can see the twist here, each pair is separate down the length of the cable. And they do this to, again, eliminate crosstalk, which is the noise that is generated, the electromagnetic noise that is generated by these wires with electricity flowing through them does not crosstalk over to here. Or it does, but it's, it's minimal. Very carefully, we want to just remove this bit of insulation because it just makes our lives a living hell. If you clip any of the wires and you can see an exposed piece of copper, cut your cable and start again because that exposed wire will actually create more noise coming out of the conductor or it will release more noise coming out of the conductor and it uh, degrades the cable so it makes it so your, your speeds won't be as high as you want them to be. Also I'd like to point out that these wires are f more finely twisted together. There, there's more twists per cable and per conductor per pair than with the Cat5e and that's again because of eliminating more crosstalk. So the order of operation here is white, orange, orange white, green, blue, and it's going to be a real pain in the ass getting this wrapped around properly, but we're going to put it over there. I'm going to do white, blue, and then it's going to be green, and it's going to be white, brown, and brown. And we want to flatten these out as much as possible, which is what I'm doing here. I just kind of wiggle them around until they flatten out. Again, we want to measure the length of what we're looking at, but then I'm going to introduce this little piece, and I'm going to confuse you all. This slides into the middle of this and it's just another piece of insulation that protects from crosstalk. So we want to cut this a little higher out and we want to put these into this connector and they will find their way right to where they need to be if I can get them all in there. Just wiggle it around a little bit. This piece and the finished product will end in the conductor or the modular plug right about there. So we want this as far down as we can because we want this piece to crimp the sheath. So what I usually do is I measure out where I want this, I put our little pieces all the way to where we want it to measure the length. So that's where the end is going to be. We use our trusty wire cutter and clip right along the edge and I'm holding this piece in place with my thumb and my forefinger and we're going to clip off the rest of those so now it's right flush with that and that's what it's going to look like alright we're going to go ahead and put this into the mod plug you can see it's a little uneven but that's that's okay because once we get it in here and get it slotted into place all these pieces 
push it all the way in. You want to make sure that, again, you see all the copper conductors along the edge. Here, we're going to, again, push this all the way in. Double check the ends here. Crimp it all the way down. Give it a nice good squeeze. Do it twice just to be sure. And there's your cable. Okay, you can see that it's crimped down onto the sheath. Everything is in place. The spacer is inside. Everything is in place. Looks great. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. For all you students out there, show this to your teachers. For all you teachers out there, showing this to your students. Hello. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Everybody else, network admins. If you are watching this video, there's something wrong with you. No, really. I'm glad you're watching this video. Subscribe, rate, comment, check out Tech Syndicate. If you have any questions, the forums are the best place to find answers to everything. If you don't find them, ask the question. Someone will answer it, or I will. It's a great place to check out. Also, you can email me, kane at techsyndicate.com. I think that's everything. Don't make me come strangle you with this cable. Have a great day. I know, I didn't talk about that. Blooper reel. Hi. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you found this helpful, please rate, subscribe. Please rate, comment. Hello, students. Check out Ted Syndicate. I thought that, didn't I? Check out Tech Syndicate.